Now we also pull this first Polaroid shade off. A nice little rod with red ground blade tinge on things. Can't know why I pick it up, but in real life, you've actually seen red ground blade deconvergence in real life. This must be like some sort of conversion or color Polaroid to get the colors to the. Uh, so it's some sort of color photo anyway. Go closer to it, go far away, it starts to uh, take the colour out there. Filters out the colour. I wonder if this will work as a colour filter for a black and white TV. Because I've seen on um, old advertisements on the internet of a colour filter. It looks something like that. And it just goes over the um, screen if you black and white TV. And it filters out and makes it colour. I doubt this sort of Polaroid is the same stuff, but yeah, that's worth a try. See what it does. But anyway, there's two of these to peel off in the back. You peel this one, that one out first, then this one. But be careful because it is hard to peel off. You don't want to put too much stress in the glass. I think that could be tough in the glass too. So that's going to be a good window for a photo frame. Anyway, let's give it a try. See if it does it with a black or white TV. Yeah. Oh, we'll just see what it does with the picture. A lot careful around the edges of the picture. Kind of get some red, green, and blue convergence marks around the picture there. Hmm, interesting. It's still black and white, but it does sort of define a chroma signal a little bit if you look carefully. I tried something different. Let's see if it's a channel here. Something with a lot of colour in it. Will the treasure out now? Let's try that one, for example. More fun than Jay Hoffman. Uh, I have five meetings this year. No, nah, it doesn't work. Yeah, so you can see, I'm moving away from the picture of it. Oh, the camera won't pick it up, but in real life, I can see some, some colour in that picture. Around the edges, like I said, the red, red, green, and blue. Do um, depolarise it, so it does sort of work. You can see the colour filter, but the camera's not going to pick it up. You've got to try this in real life to actually see something. The camera just does not work. Yeah, I can see through here the camera can't pick it up, but the LEDs, you can see the lines it makes. So it polarises a certain way, that sheet. Yeah, it's not a colour filter for a black or white TV. You can see in real life it actually picks up the chroma around the edges of the picture. And you actually see where the... Um, yeah, as I was saying, around the edges of the picture, it does actually pick up the red, green, and blue around it. But yeah, it doesn't work as a colour filter. That's that second layer of Polaroid um, colour filter sheet taken off. Be very careful, it's quite difficult to get that off. You don't want to put too much stress in the glass. Work your way around, start with the edges, turn it around, rotate it a couple of times, and work your way toward the centre to pull it off. Same on this front one. You can see it's some metal on here. They've etched it with some sort of metallic uh, film on it. But it gives the picture a tiny bit of blue tinge. That it will work all as a photo frame. I reckon this is a good for black or white photographs. It gives it that um, blue appeal, like an old blue phosphor black and white TV. So it's kind of uh, still in my favour actually. That'll look retro like that. Look really good. So this will be good for black or white photographs with that sort of um, blue tinge to it. So now we go back in there, I put all the brackets back on, strip this down, this will be a um, good background to put all the photographs in, so I can hang it on the wall. Be a good photo frame, serve those fish tank as well. Yep, got the front uh, polarisation sheet off, it's got a bit of a metallic tinge to it as well. Now we have a pure glass with the uh, metallic etching on it, on the back of it. Looks kind of cool. This will make black and white photographs look really cool, because of that retro appeal. So, fitted patience to pull that um, the, the sheets off. Be careful. I work your way around. Turn the around, work way around towards the center. Apply straight downward force on the paint. Don't push it so it flexes, because that's what makes it break. So you got to go straight down, push straight down the glass. Work your way toward the middle to get it off. It's quite an elaborate task. It takes a while, but to recycle and reuse this glass paint for a photo frame project, it's worth it. For free glass, I can't complain. That's, I think it's toughened glass too, as I said, because it's angry people throw stuff at the panel. It's supposed to protect the panel, as well as polarise it. Anyway, I'll give these a clean up and put the glass back in and make the uh, 
rest of that tunnel shipped that apart, keep the metal part in the back as a backing, and I'll just make my own background. Sewa manufactured, he made, he made the plastic. 2000 millimeters all up. I'll call use that. Bolt that back on the back of that with a little bracket that went where the digital board went. Set it up on the coffee table. Yeah. Just be creative. You can even stick a restaurant menu or something in there. Be really cool. So there's a million things you can recycle your old flat panel TV with. Anyway, I'll get, try to scratch it up, keep it all preserved, and I'll uh, put it back together. And if you was not happy with how this patch here worked out, works out quite well. Not much corrosion at all on that, it's worked out perfectly. This would be an absolutely ideal batch for my ZVS now. Yeah, that obviously doesn't work anymore because the electrolyte's different now. Just going to say lay battery charge at a time, but that doesn't matter. Because I've broken that top off, it's not completely sealed, and it's going to make a bit of a mess every time, so... That one there, I'll stick him under this table. I'll put like a little thing for my charge on it every now and then. Maybe I'll um, flog them out from, from my ZVS. Got that one, that one, and this one. These two are the weakest. I'll probably use these for something else. We'll see what happens. But, it's actually quite a... Worked out quite well. The amount of juice I got out of them is good enough for my ZVS. I mean, I'm never going to crank it. This will never crank a lawnmower over there. These won't. But for my uh, ZVS, they're absolutely bloody ideal. I've got one in the connecting strap made up, as I said. And it's going to make another one. So I've got one for 24, another one for th the third, set of bat uh, third battery. Start digging out some more of these uh, battery clips. A quick test off camera, and I'm getting over 15 amps out of it. I'm pretty impressed. Pretty impressed with how this has worked out. Works quite well. Look at that. Beautiful. Look at that, eh? Better than those dual batteries. The weakest batch of being that century one. But I'll replace with that bloody um with that supercharged one. You get a bit flat, see? Safety first, discharge. It's gone down to 10 amps now, so this batch is the weakest. That's only got about 8 volts left in it, but I didn't probably haven't reformed it properly. As I said earlier, when doing the alum conversion, the condition of the battery internally is everything. So that one has still sort of crank, that one still cranks over a lawnmower, so don't let your battery get any weaker than that if you want to use it for this purpose. I'd like it to catch up on it early. That one there doesn't crank over a lawnmower, but it still has enough amps to hold itself over. Um, it's still, the plates are still in good enough condition for this purpose, so it's, it's going to work. It's just this one is a little too far gone. But for something low power, it'll be all right. So that will be replaced with this one. I don't think it's going to be any more than 250 cold cracking amps left in it. So there's just the limitation is the uh, the alum. I'm not going to ever get it to that spec ever ever again. But we'll try our best. This is just I'm only letting it on the charge for a long time just to form up the plates because it was all flat. But now it's charged. To this uh, the electrolyte, the way this electrolyte's going, it's uh, it's formed. So give it, a, give it a bit of a clean up and replace it with um, this century on with that big battery. I have three good batteries from my ZPS. I haven't got any more of these battery terminal clips, so I've got to actually use some copper pipe, flattened it out, and just clamps on. Works quite well. That's the old Commodore one. Just repurposed it. There we are, done. I'll stick them under that table. Put a little wire going on to it to a bigger connector for this. Yeah, 9.4 volts. This is the weakest link. 11.3, 11.4. So this needs a bit of a bit of a recharge. But it actually worked out quite well. I've actually noticed, even though it's actually used to be far gone, and it is, but it's starting to actually recover a tiny bit. 
Now I wouldn't recommend doing this, but I gave it a good zap with the MIG rotor. To start out with 17 volts, I had it on flat out 30 volts and touched the trickle a couple of times, held it down, and listened carefully for sizzling. That seems to have uh, fixed it a little bit, but yeah, I think this is too far gone even for a bloody atom conversion. So, yeah, it's definitely buggered. It was holding 8 volts, now it's about 10.8 volts, so one of the solids did get a good revival. It did fix it a little bit, so I'm convinced the welder method does work, but it's very risky. But if we had a bloody um, battery exchange around here, I could just take this in and exchange it for a better one, like uh, they do in America with the core charge. I could bring my little battery tester, just take one of these in, one of those real bad ones in, and exchange them for one of the one that's still good. And I did a conversion that way. Well, I do get batteries for free, my brother can get them from his work, so just not as often as I used to. So for alum conversion I'd rather the um, these types, non maintenance free for the alum conversion because you can easily get the top off, unscrew them and screw them on and top up the electrolyte if needed. But yeah, this is too too far gone, even for an alum conversion unfortunately, so yeah. Yeah it's lost a bit of weight though. It's doing something. It's come, it's come good for it for a little bit, so it's not even anywhere as warm either. Hey, that's not even as warm. I think this battery's recovering. Unbelievably. It's nowhere near as warm. That's cooled down a lot. Ah, I think I might have um got somewhere with this. Either way, wouldn't give your hopes up. Never give your hopes up on an old battery, but anyway. It's just an experiment, just to stuff around. Either way, it's all fun. We'll see what happens here, this battery goes. I'll let it uh, charge all day, monitor the voltage and see if it holds that charge. If not, it's definitely gone. But it's actually not as warm, I'm surprised. I think the short might have cleared. I might have, uh, that zap it with the water might have actually um, smashed through the excess lead sulfate crystals in there. Unbelievably. Very risky, as I said, but it does work. Anyway, let's uh, give it another century battery a charge on my ZVS. I just did another check off camera. The load and the amp measurement, the current's gone right down. Measured with the multimeter, it's gone up to 11.3 volts. I think I've actually revived this battery a bit. Beautiful. Hey, hey, I think I'm getting somewhere with this battery. Hopefully I will come good enough when I hold that charge. I may be able to convert this to alum. Sweet. This UPS chance from my outlet electrifier makes the best battery charger, I tell you. Constant 14 volts. Perfect battery charger. Mimics this one exactly. I don't have to find an enclosure for this, so make a proper enclosure with a proper cable gland. Because now I'm using this more often, I'm gonna have to make this a lot safer. So I'm happy with how this little UPS transformers work here. I'm going to have to get some more of these. They make the bloody best battery chargers. Even if I can connect multiple in series for a good 36 volt power supply that way for a ZVS. That may be an idea, but my goal, I want battery powered for my ZVS. More convenient, it's clean DC, and overall it's more uh, eco-friendly, so to speak. You don't have to pull so much power, but who cares. That's why I'm doing the alum conversion for the batteries. Trying to be uh, eco here, be uh, recycle things. So I've got all these bloody batteries, I might as well do this with them. And so far, I'm happy. It's actually working good, the powder ZBS. As I said, that century one was a bit flat to begin with, so give it a good charge. Then I'll place it with this one. We'll see how it goes. But I can't believe this, and it is actually starting to revive. It's cooling down. I was convinced maybe it is buggered, but after I zapped it with a welder, it's actually starting to come up a bit. The charger's not as warm either. Unbelievable. I can't believe it. It's actually reviving. Anyway. Another thing I've realised with my, uh, I've got another, um, that printer power supply off the HP, that HP printer I had, that power supply off that. 
Now what did I say it was? It was a 32 volts, one and a half amps. That runs a lot better off this. I got another one of those coming. A warm white one though. The cool white ones are out of stock. So I'm going to try it on that one. Now you do have to hit the sweet spot with these to get the best brightness. That can go a lot brighter than what this runs it at. With these, you got LEDs in particular, you have to hit their sweet spot to get the best optimal brightness out of them. So that's not an ideal. It's not hitting the sweet spot. It's bloody bright, but it can go brighter. It has got more potential than that. But for a quick and dirty, cheap setup, it works perfectly. We'll see how we go. I might have to buy a power supply for one of these LEDs. But I think this knee actually uh, might hit that sweet spot. 32 volts, 1.5 amps. That's a lot more than that. Uh